I want to go over a deal that I've been following up on a gal for like two months. Finally, she's she just had her second fail sale and she's over it. So it's um, in St. Paul, Minnesota. It's in a little suburb called Maplewood. I don't know if you guys know where that's at. Um, it's an 1,850 square foot house with a 600 square foot unfinished basement. It's built in 79. It's kind of a four split level house. One of those funky ones, but it's a pretty nice house. Um, it's got an ARV according to Zillow and PropStream. Uh, Zillow's at 305, PropStream's at 297. I've verified those comps. I think there's a lot of sold comps in that neighborhood recently for 300 grand ish. Um, she, uh, she said we can buy it for 270. She'll carry it for five. It's a five year term she'll allow us to have on it. And uh, her payment's 1700 bucks a month all in. Rents are anywhere from 1800 to 2200 prop stream has it at 1997 so i uh i just i don't think it needs a lot of work it's failed once for some people backed out because they didn't want to fix it has a driveway was cracked or something like that they didn't want to fix it and then the second time it just failed it's because of the riots the people backed out because of the riots <laughs> so what do you guys think of that area what do you think of the numbers what's the area again St. Paul, Minnesota, a suburb outside of St. Paul called Maplewood. Uh, as long as you're not in the city of Minneapolis, you're, you're probably okay. Everyone, once again, is going to be fleeing the suburbs where they have actual police protection. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just saw, in fact, we just talked to a client uh, yesterday, I think one of Chris's guys, Blair, that was in that market, was a landlord in Minneapolis, and he's, you know, rapidly moving all of his investments to the suburbs. So, and St. Paul would be considered a suburb. Okay. In terms okay. of the deal points, whether it's a good deal or not, you guys know, you know the drill. <clears throat> um, my sense is that's probably marginal compared to what we're seeing out there today. Okay. But, you know, you could make 300 bucks a month. There's a few dollars of equity, probably make a good lease option. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I was just, yeah, I was just curious on that because it's so so close to um, Minneapolis, but uh, you know, I mean, let's talk about this, this riots everywhere and stuff like that. And what you see, you know, I don't see um, this lasting too long. You know, I mean, I don't see this as something that can go on forever and ever and ever. So um, I mean, six months from now, we might not even remember this even happened. So where does that put us as far as lease option type tenants and people looking to buy on terms? I think there's still a huge pent up demand um, out there for people. And I think that the lease option candidates uh, will be of a higher quality, but with less money going forward. If that makes sense. That would be my, you know, crystal ball. Boom. Mm -hmm. Okay. All Across right. the board, whether so, it's, you know, MSP or, or wherever. So if we know that people may have less option deposit money coming in, how do we structure our deals differently? Or how would we start to, how would we start to structure our deals differently? Speed. I would implement as much speed into the process as possible. You want to have <clears throat> this thing sold as quick as you can get it. And you don't want to get it until you have it sold. If that makes sense. <laughs> yep. Sounds like I'm talking in circles, but you know, you know, better to have, uh, get that buyer before you close. Don't take a risk, in other words. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like or, you're talking about mitigating risk as much as possible. Right. Taking and maybe quantity over quality. Yeah. And, you know, frankly, high-end rents. I mean, one of the other articles that I didn't talk about uh, today, because I didn't flush it all the way out, but there was a housing wire did a, a kind of a survey of tenants and a huge percentage of the tenants in this country that are paying over seventeen fifty a month. I don't know why they picked that number, but that was their survey number. Uh, and it was it was north of fifty percent. It was like sixty or seventy percent of people who are in rentals that have less than a year to go that pay over seventeen fifty are planning to not renew their rentals. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't take it further and say, "Well, does that mean you're going to grandma's basement, or does that mean you're going to buy a house?" You know, they didn't, they didn't get that far into the, the dealio. Um, but 
you know, just as a general rule, I would bracket the thing down a little bit more. I think I'd put it more in the first time home buyer category. Um, I would not, we tell people this all the time. I wouldn't be buying, you know, properties subject to even to lease option them in San Francisco or San Diego or someplace where the dollars are, you know, oh yeah, it's, you know, rent was 3,900. Now it's 3,400. Stay away from that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're starting to even on um, deals like this that are a little bit more um, tight, so to speak, we're starting to put a contingency now where we have to find our lease purchase buyer before before we're even gonna close. So if it's a mm -hmm. if it's a questionable area or it's you know, the numbers just aren't awesome, that's kind of what we're doing. So that place in Gillette, that's what we've done. And I don't know if we're gonna find a buyer for that, quite honestly. It's been a little it's been a little challenging. I can't find anybody with more than three grand. <laughs> well, and you know, you just have to decide is doing a volume, being a volume house where you're doing three grand, you know, 10 times a month um, and, and making $300 plus per month on your rent. Is that, uh, you know, are you copacetic with that or what's well, the it's, it's only a $250 cash flow and she needs three grand to move on. So We'd be, we'd be in it. I mean, we'd have to pay closing costs. So I think what I'm going to do is if I do have a buyer that's got, you know, I'm going to try to get it five grand. Um, if I have a buyer at five grand, I think I might just um, uh, assign the lease contract and, and let her deal with it. That's kind of what I'm thinking because it's mm -hmm. not, not strong enough cash flow. I'm nervous about the area. It's very clear to me that it's struggling. Um, so I'm, I'm nervous even about hitting a buyer in there at five, you know, if I can get them at $5,000 down, um, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking about just assigning the lease back to her, back to her, back to the seller. Yeah. You know, here's yeah. your three grand, here's your tenant, here's your $200 cash flow. I'll keep two grand for my efforts and you know, good luck. The other thing to look at in this market, in my opinion, is buying properties to hold for a period of time, uh, as a, op, as a, um, uh, rental property um, you can get in and, and, and this is the Robert Kiyosaki kind of model let's say you put three thousand dollars down and you make net three hundred dollars a month on a mm -hmm. tenancy so in ten months you've gotten all your money back um, you know so that's that's a, a cap rate above a hundred it may be worth buying those things and putting people in there for a year or two and then seeing what the market does at that point it's going to take a period of time. Here's the thing. Big lease options are hit or miss, but they are more hit when the economy is great and everybody's employed and they're making big money and people are, you know, employers are begging for employees. We're not, we're going the other way right now. So it's just by nature that you're going to see smaller deals. And so you may want to park them in your inventory, put them in your rental fleet and, and just, have somebody pay the bill for a period of time and then go back and lease option them after the next tenant or the next or whatever. But no matter what, we're not in the business of assuming somebody else's problems. Right. So if your lady needs three to move and you can only get three, you're, you're taking on her problem. Right. Yep. So that, and your time's worth more than that. Mm -hmm. So a lot more. Yeah. 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 Don't, don't forget the other option that you guys said you've done in the past of, you know, instead of you executing the exit that Jeff just outlined, maybe there's some other investor you could sell the deal to that would love to take that deal. Right. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, I think I need to kind of um, probably restructure my marketing or add some different marketing with, you know, some different content. We're going to try a couple things before we shift gears completely. We're going to try some different wording in our ads. And then we're going to maybe, we're going to try a little bit of a price reduction. We might be slightly overpriced, but I don't know if that makes that, if that makes a difference in this area, but we're going to try those two things for a week or two. And then we're going to go back to the drawing board and right. make a decision on this place. You're, you're in a tough area there that, you know, oil based economy in Wyoming is just, it's going to be, you can't beat it. I mean, it's like, you know, doing the same thing in South Texas right now. It's tough. The economy is tough. Above and beyond the COVID-related stuff, it's, I mean, I guess COVID, it's COVID and COVID-related from the standpoint of the pricing of the, the gas market has dropped. It is coming back, but it's not going to be back for a while. Not where it was.